Breaking news coming under a month from the Olympics kicking off in Paris and Team USA basketball is taking a hit as Kawhi Leonard is withdrawing from the team according to The Athletic. The Athletic reporting that Kawhi, the Clipper star, has been battling chronic knee soreness and inflammation for months and now will not play for Team USA as they prepare to get ready for their first exhibition game later on today. Now for even more on Team USA, we bring in our coach, the one and only Avery Johnson. And coach, we were already going to talk Team USA, and now this is just perfect timing here with the Kawhi Leonard news. First, your reaction of his departure from the team and what this might mean for Team USA moving forward. Well, my first um, thought is Kawhi Leonard. I was wondering why was Kawhi Leonard on the team in the first place, especially with his injury history. He couldn't finish the uh, playoffs with the Clippers in the Mavericks series. He wasn't healthy towards the end of the year. So how all of a sudden was Kawhi on the team in the first place? He hasn't been um, the best ability is availability. He hasn't been available on a consistent basis. Look at over the last two or three years since he joined the Clippers, how many possible games has he how many possible games could he have played in and was he available? He wasn't. So I was really, really surprised that uh, Kawhi was on the team in the first place. And this is no surprise to me that he's not going to be participating in the Olympics. Just the other day at uh, media day, we heard from Kawhi kind of say he was feeling good, like being around the team and enjoy the whole atmosphere. So now you get him leaving and you got to look towards Team USA. How do they replace him? Derek White, a name being thrown out there by the Athletic as a potential replacement. How do you feel about the idea about the Boston Celtics White joining up with Team USA? Yeah, if that would happen, that would have made more sense in the beginning. And then Derek White, just the idea of being named to the team, you know, you, you keeping your body ready. Uh, or Jalen Brown. Jalen Brown, you know, I think he would have been a good uh, fit for this team. Uh, so I, I'm sure if Derek White is asked, he'll accept. But um, I think this could have been a whole lot smoother in the beginning had Derek White been a part of this team. Who I think would have been a much better fit. If you would have asked me, from day one, Derek White or Kawhi Leonard or Jalen Brown or Kawhi Leonard on this uh, Olympic team, I would have picked either of those guys. So hopefully he'll accept uh, if he's called upon. Yeah, come and join the team on the 11th hour. Certainly not a easy task to do for sure. Um, what about maybe someone like Cooper Flagg, who we saw star with the team select, and he's a guy that would be the 12th man on the roster, probably not going to play in the first place. So do you give the roster spot up to him potentially? No, I wouldn't do that. Um, I, I would let Cooper think about the next Olympic team uh, four years uh, uh, four years in the future. I would I would deal with, uh, select somebody that's more experienced uh, not just in uh, just in the NBA period and you got two guys sitting there right now that's just won an NBA championship playing against Luka Doncic and uh, Kyrie Irving so I, I would lean still more to a veteran player who would understand his role and a guy like Derek White if he started or if he was the tenth man on the team, he would he would fit into that role role seamlessly. Probably safe to say whoever Team USA does pick to fill in that void of Kawhi will not be a starter. But the starting lineup is a conversation that people have had a lot of fun with on social media this week, trying to decide what starting five do they want. If you're the head coach, if you're Steve Kerr, who are you sending out there to start the game? Well, with my starting lineup, which is Includes Kevin Durant. You know, I would have Drew Holiday, Devin Booker, Durant, LeBron, and Anthony Davis. And that's why having a guy like a Jalen Brown or Derek White is important because we we're still questioning Kevin Durant's health right now. You know, he's gonna miss the game uh, uh, tonight. But this would be my lineup if everyone's healthy. Booker and Drew Holiday was on the last Olympic team. Obviously, Kevin Durant. Anthony Davis, versatile, LeBron James, uh, you know, he can guard all five positions. So you have the abilities of guys here can all create their own shot. Uh, everybody can knock down the three-point shot. 
Uh, you got switchability on defense. Uh, Devin Booker, I, I could have easily uh, went in another direction here uh, with Devin Booker's spot, but I think in terms of chemistry, uh, that, that would be my starting lineup. Some will say Steph Curry, but I like Steph with this team coming off the bench. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask next because I look at your starting lineup. I see no Steph. I see no Anthony Edwards and no Embiid. Why do you go that way of straying away from the three of them maybe, especially a guy like Ant that says he's option number one on this team? All right, so if you start Steph, then who are you going to sit? Drew Holiday? And they need Drew Holiday's defense, especially against a lot of these these foreign teams. Uh, if you start Anthony Davis, who are you going to sit on the bench? Booker, uh, LeBron, or Kevin Durant? So it's always going to be a question mark. That's why this team is so stacked and deep. If you start in B, then are you going to go big with Anthony Davis? And if Anthony Davis is in the lineup, then what happens with Durant or LeBron James? So there's always going to be question marks. The best thing for Steve Kerr to do is find the best starting five that fit together that's going to have the best chemistry on the court. And that starting five may rotate from game to game depending on your opponent. Probably a good issue to have if you are Steve Kerr with all that depth and especially when you look at someone like KD who will not play in tonight's exhibition game against Canada as he deals with this calf strain still trying to work his way back. We haven't really even seen him be able to ramp up with Team USA. So how concerned are you maybe that he's missing this acclimation period and turning it around to be ready in time for the start of the Olympics? I'm not really as concerned about Durant, especially with a few exhibition games. Um, I think, you know, really, if he can get one or two of those exhibitions in towards the end when they travel to Abu Dhabi um, to play in some of those games. But right now, he's still moving well, still getting up shots. You know, calf strain, just like hamstrings, can be a little temperamental. You don't want to overcompensate. But I think he'll be good to go for the start of the Olympics. And because of the depth of this team, you don't have, ever have to overuse Durant. He doesn't have to play the whole game. You know, even if he plays 18 minutes, 16 minutes, that, that's going to still be a win for um, our Olympic team. Yeah, Katie, a guy who has got a whole lot of buckets for Team USA over the course of his career. Uh, that career did not include playing out in FIBA. And you look at tonight when you get Canada and Team USA, the last time these two teams met was in that bronze medal game for the FIBA World Championship just last year, a game that Canada won. Knowing that and with that in your mind, seeing them play again tonight, what will you be looking for and how should the U.S. maybe view Canada? Well, that was with our C team. 